Today's webinar will be how to automate contracts now from start to finish and never miss a de another deadline. My name is Nicole Schmeida. I'm the marketing specialist here at DocuWare and I'll be moderating the session today. The webinar will be presented by Jonathan Ernst, regional sales director here at DocuWare. So on the right, you can see today's agenda. The first few minutes, Jonathan will you know, highlight you know, some top contract management challenges we're seeing and how DocuWare can help you overcome those. Then he'll dive into a live introductory demo and at the end, we'll open it up for some Q&A. So like I said, we're scheduled for about 30 to 40, um, but of course, you know, we'll email the recording like I said before. All right, with that now, I'll pass it off to Jonathan. Thanks. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Jonathan. I'm Regional Sales Director for DocuWare for Chicago and the surrounding states. Um, before we get started, quick February check-in. Um, you know, we in Chicago here survived the deep freeze. We're finally getting close to spring weather. I can't wait for um, baseball to come back and spring to come back into the state because I'm tired a little bit about the winter. I hope you guys are feeling okay and doing okay. But let's talk about top contract management challenges. Um, I pulled up a slide of a research report that DocuSign put together. It's about the state of contract management from the year 2019. You can see on the top left, there is uh, the three biggest challenges that the um, people added that they currently face and with contracts. Number one is being approvals. Number two is being clause management by 33% and 27% um, ch uh, challenge with, with workflows. And one more number I'd like to highlight on the bottom right is that 33% of employees said a typical contract takes 30 plus hours to negotiate, likely due to versioning and modifications. Now, I wanna take these challenges that we see here on the slide and kind of walk you through in an introductory demo today, how we can tackle them with DocuWare and how we can help you solve them. Um, but before we're going to go into this, we want to hear quickly from you. Um, Nicole put together a quick poll. Um, Nicole, if you want to kick this off really quick. Yep, sure. So we have a very short uh, question for you guys. So I'm going to launch it now. If you, It should launch in the middle of your screen. So, you know, I just want to get a feel for how are you managing your contracts now? Um, you know, maybe you don't have a defined process. You know, you do have or you do have one, but it's just, you know, manual at the moment, or you're already using another contract software and you kind of just, you know, you're checking what DocuWare has to offer or, you know, other. So everyone can just take a quick second just to select one choice. We'll just wait here a few seconds till we get about 75% response here. We're almost there. Thank you for um, those who have answered already. Looks like we got we're approaching 70% here. And all right, so with that now, I'm going to close the poll and I will share the results. Let me close it now. And I will share it. So you can kind of see, get a feel for who else on the line, you know, how are they managing their contracts? So it looks like by far, you know, a lot of you definitely have a process, but it looks like, you know, you're still doing it manually. So that's great you're on the webinar today. You can see you know, what DocuWare has to offer and how you can take that next step in digitizing and streamlining your contract processes. All right, so I'm gonna pass it back to Jonathan now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate you putting the poll together. Um, I'm, you know, um, I'm glad you guys are here because we should definitely tackle um, this and, and automate more where we can. Um, let's talk briefly about DocuWare. Um, in crazy times like this, I know you've heard this multiple times, but you know, we in DocuWare actually live it. For us, it's reality. You can access and you know documents for whomever you need, you know, regardless if you're in the office, on the road, across the country, home, or anywhere, right? Um, and then also, regardless which device you want to use, right? It's 2021. Accounts, uh, documents should be able to be opened up through your iPhone or through your Android device or your tablet or your computer, um, just to make it easier, right? Me as a vote warrior, I always can appreciate that I can just pull up documents or file a quick travel expense claim when I'm waiting in the airport or when I'm with a client. It just makes my life a little bit easier. 
Also, we talked about manual processes. We have um, the ability through the workflow designer in DocuWare to automate certain work, workflow and tasks. We are able to assign tasks and we can alert team members with instant email notifications. We also can automatically send key stakeholders documents to review and approve. Also, we can recreate workflows or processes that you currently have in your organization within DocuWare to, you know, to just have everything in one place. Now, but without further ado, let's take a little bit of a look into DocuWare itself. I'm excited to give you a demo today. Let me just switch here, um, close this. Well, fantastic. Um, so the way I had structured the demo for today, I will give you a brief introductory for people who have never seen Docu before. We will then spend a little bit of time talking about how we can get documents into DocuWare. We'll then talk about how we can find documents, store documents, how does the workflow engine that we just talked about work, and how can we monitor it and do manage versions and talk about permissions. So um, again, this is a little bit of an introductory meeting. If you have a, want a little bit more of an in-depth demo, never shy away from contacting your local resources um, in your in your area. Okay, so you can see that we can access DocuWare um, from your favorite from your browser, regardless if it is Mozilla Firefox, Chrome, or whatever you prefer. Um, you don't have to install any kind of software on your computer. Next thing for this demo today, I will be logged in as an administrator, which means I will have a top-down view onto the software. Um, and you know, I'm using a demo account for AP Fantasy Company. You know, usually that should have your company name there. Um, next thing you'll notice is that DocuWare has a split screen kind of. Where on the right-hand side we have DocuWare's Document Viewer. On the left-hand side, on the top, we have the navigation bar, and below we have the workspace. If you click twice in the document, the document does open in DocuWare Viewer. We can flip through pages to take a look and read through the document. You can obviously zoom in or zoom out. But we also have a couple of more features which will help you with your transition from paper to digital documents. Um, everybody likes to take quick little notes, comments, highlights onto documents. So this is where we built the annotation section within the document viewer. If you just want to add a quick little annotation saying this is an annotation, you can just add it on top of it. If you'd like to highlight a certain part of the contract or document, you could try using your mouse and highlight it like this. Obviously, there's different color options as well. Or we could use, um, you could draw a box over a certain line like this and make it even bigger or smaller, however you'd like. Um, you can also, draw an error to really point out that we can find what we highlight on this document, or we could also draw an invisible box over a certain part of the document, right, which makes the information disappear behind it. Um, just be aware that the annotations is a separate layer on top of the document that can be turned on and off at any point, um, but you can also restrict that to certain user groups in the organization based on permissions, so maybe Group A is not allowed to remove annotations so that you can kind of redact information or redact information and hide information behind this box. Um, we can also zoom in into a document. If you wanted to see this part of the con a little bit better, you can zoom in. You can with one click zoom out again. You can print the document either with P as a PDF with the annotation or without or you can send it directly from the view as an email, either as a the whole document or just the current page you're on, and its original format or convert it to PDF with the annotation or without. Um, okay. Um, on the left-hand side, um, you notice we're currently in the document trace, that's why it's highlighted in blue. Now the document trace are a core part of Docuware solution. This is where we receive documents before we process them, right? So this is not, this is just a temporarily holding space, not the permanent one. You'll notice now, this is the point where, where I'd like to talk on and talk about the fact how we can get documents into DocuWare. You'll notice we have an import button here that allows us to find one documents that you have maybe saved on, on your local computer. You click on the subcontractor agreement and you pull them with one click. 
very easy. We can also connect Docuware to your local scanner that you might have on your desk or your multifunction device that you have connected um, with your internet or we can monitor a hot folder. So you can just print or just scan a document that lands directly into Docuware. Now, majority of documents are being sent nowadays by email as well. So Docuware has multiple avenues how we can pull in documents from email into Docuware very easily. Um, I prepared a sample email with a sample contract that um, in my in my Outlook, you can you'll notice that here at the top we have a direct integration with Outlook. That means I can store this email and this contract with the click of a button like this, and I can see processes, and now it's stored in 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 a document train document. Now, and we also mark this email. Um, that it's been stored, so you don't on accident store an email twice. But this is not the only way, right? If you wanted to automate it a step further, we could also monitor a, a subfolder of the inbox, so every email you drag into there or that gets automatically routed there through rules in Outlook, we can push it into Docuware, or we can monitor an email address that maybe invoices at Docuware.com or contracts at Docuware.com. Every email with attachment we get, we can pull in. But to show you that the integration worked, let's take a look here. You can see we have the email um, in here, right in DocuWare, and we have it clipped with the attachment that we just saw, right? But usually you don't necessarily want to have the email stored with the contract. So let me show you what we can do. We can unclip those two documents. So you can now see that the sample, doc, sample contract is now removed from the email. Right, and it was just a click of a button. Um, throughout this demo and throughout when you look at Docuer, you will see an overall theme. You will see the ease of use. Um, Docuer is known for its user friendliness and its user experience. Um, and it had us, has brought us multiple awards from third party evaluators and on any kind of software evaluation um, platform or portal. You'll notice that Docuer has great rankings for that. So that's just one more feature. But we're talking about contracts today. Now, before we are going to go into how can we store documents, let's take a little bit of a look how we can find them first. You'll notice that next to document trace, I will click on search and our workspace below will change. Uh, you also notice that we have a variety of different index fields here um, in the search dialog. So we can search by literally anything. We can search by the company name, which date, or what, what was the pending date, the expiration date, the signature date. And all of these index fields can be customized as much as you want. We understand every organization is different. So we want to give you all the options you need. Rest assured, this is just a sample of, of what I thought might be great to show. If you leave everything blank in those fields, it will bring back all the documents in that um, in that filing cabinet. Um, and just really quick, the difference between the filing cabinet and the document tray is, document tray again, is the temporarily holding place for document before we process them. The filing cabinet is the, the final place where, we, where they're gonna be stored permanently and then maybe work with them through a process. You'll notice here we have a couple of um, contracts in here. You know, we can click on any kind of contract and impose it right in the viewer. I still at this point can leave annotations if I'd like to. Um, if we are looking for a specific contract, for example, from company, let's say Joey's, you can start typing and you know how this auto suggest puts in the value based on what is in the filing cabinet. So if I select that value, and hit the search button, it will bring back one contract or one document that is from the company Joe's contracting. Um, I can also search, as I mentioned earlier, by the signature date, um, expiration date, and that just you know helps me to quickly with the click of a button find documents. You know, not every filing cabinet will only have 11 documents. Some of them may have thousands of documents, right? So we want to give you the option to quickly drill down what you find. Now. Back to user friendliness, right? We understand that some users prefer a more of a folder structure like they use with the Windows Explorer. No problem. We also have, we can access documents in a different way. We can see here the folders part. Let's click on this. Now this is basically remodeled based on how we access documents um, 
in in Windows. You can see we now have can access um, contracts based on company names. Let's go back to Joe's Contract and Co. Click on it. You can see now there's a subcontract agreement in it. And now we can find the exact same document that we just found on the search. It doesn't make a difference how you want to access documents, either through search, as we saw before, or through folders. It will bring back the exact same documents, but it's just like, what do you prefer to how to find them, right? Um, just wanted to show you that really quick. Now, um, let's talk about lists really quick. Now, lists are a, a key component of Docker, especially in the contract world you can see we have i have three lists pulled open one is 30 days expiration one is 60 days expiration one is 90 days expiration which means our lists function as a dashboard where i can monitor as soon as a contract gets to 90 days expirations it will get listed in here and i with the click of a button can can pull it up in the list that will automatically monitor those um so i will never miss a renewal date or or want to double check if I want to cancel that contract. Um, so, but let's take a look how, how this might work in real time. Um, um, I'm going to store um, a subcontract agreement in my um, contracts filing cabinet. So I'm going to go ahead and store it. Now you'll see. Now we kind of have to we have to fill those index values, and you can see it's it's not all of them that we saw in the search dialog are now populated here. Um, I limited it a little bit. The number one thing is what we want to avoid is that you have to do any kind of or reduce the amount of any kind of manual labor. So if you wanted to start typing, well, I'm known for having spelling errors. So what we came up with is what Docker calls a one-click indexing. So what does it mean? So let's say you want to fill in the contract type. Um, you move your mouse over into the viewer where you can select um, the word subcontract and agreement. You see how that highlights it. If you press your left mouse and keep it pressed, you can mark those two words together. We'll automatically pull those values in, right? I mean, this was more for demo purposes. In real life, this would look something like this. You would select the date, maybe probably today. You would put in that today is uh, contact name is Joseph Smith. We say maybe this has already been processed. Um, and then we have email here is joysmithcc.com. An expiration date, we'll set it for some time, end of next month. Okay, now that we filled that out in a quick manner, we're going to hit the store button and let's see what's going to happen. The first thing you'll notice is that our lists automatically signal the one. So let's take a look what's going on here. So you can see we set the date in a manner that the expiration day is uh, between 31 and 60 days. So it automatically filled it that in. So it, you know, so I promised you earlier it would automatically monitor it. Now we can go back and I can confidently say, yes, it does it correctly. And here you can see it. Um, and it will even on all the documents pull that open up. Um, if you um, if you just wanted to find the document in the filing cabinet, no problem. You can go back here, leave everything empty, and because it's the latest document we just stored, it's right in here with the expiration date on um, 31st of March. Um, if you have, but this so this was one way how we can store documents. Um, there's also the option what we call is intelligent indexing. So you saw how we have with one click indexing. We we stored the document and filled in the index values. Well, we can even cut that time shorter so that there's even less manual work. But let me show you what I mean. So we put the we got the document into a document tray from however what source we had, if it was it was an email or a scan that came in, or you just pull it in from your computer. You hit the store button, you hit the filing cabinet set up for intelligent indexing with the little lamp next to it, and you see. Now, there's no typing necessary anymore. All these index values are already filled in. Now, what happened? You can see that if I go into a field, let's say, for example, contact, um, it will pull up um, where exactly where it found that value. Now, what? so at the marking and the pulling in the value, the process behind this is called intelligent indexing. For, for the geeks in the audience, just a really quick explanation what, what this all means is the intelligent indexing is a artificial intelligence OCR text recognition that learns the structure of your document. And then once you store, let's say, a mutual non-disclosure agreement from Peters Engineering three to four times, um, and we train the algorithm where to look for certain values, um, 
it will start picking them up and it, for the next one that comes in, it automatically pulls it in. Well, now the question remains like, hold on, how do I train intelligent indexing? It's as simple as one click indexing. Let's say it didn't pull up the contact. Well, it's just do one click indexing, it pulls in the information and now you've trained intelligent indexing, right? It's as easy as that. Um, so um, when we store a contract, right, we can, you know, we showed you a little bit how we can monitor it, right? So seeing like, hey, when does contract, a contract A or B expire, I want to make sure that it don't miss any deadlines. Now, what we also can do, we can process it. So we receive, we have a contract that you want to send out for Jonathan Ernst um, to sign, right? So, you know, remember, I'm, you know, the admin administrator, so I send it from an admin perspective to Jonathan Ernst, so me to sign it. Um, usually that's going to be an external party, right? So I'm going to hit the store button, and at the same time, I'm going to kick off a workflow. Um, let's take a look. My task, you can see I have put in a quick little contract check, but this is now how some part of the contract works, right? A document gets come in, we store it, and it might kick off a workflow, right? Um, so now we can update the contract values. Just a really quick, the reason why I put this in, um, because we're going to use DocuSign to sign the contract on, on page three, just to show you right now that there's no smoke screen. Um, there's no signature right now there. Um, and usually DocuSign has, if you have worked with it, you know it, but it has um, three ways how you can authenticate that it's really me or that it's really Jonathan Ernst who signs it. Number one will be the access code. So I will now put in an access code that Jonathan Ernst has to type in. I will use something simple as one, two, three, four. You could also put in a phone number that will then, you know, you you want to authenticate yourself. You receive a text with a with a number. You type it in, and then you can send a contract. Or you you don't have to do authentication, right? If it's something you know less legally important, you you, you just know that this person will sign it, and um, then you could do that as well. In this case, I will use the access code to authenticate it. Now, if I'm going to hit confirm, I'm going to live show you how this document will get sent from DocuWare through DocuSign to my email address. Um, and at this point, um, it might take a couple of seconds to get to that because you know it has to leave my system to go into the other part. When I mean leave, it doesn't technically leave. It just gets connected to it. I still have here my mutual non-disclosure in the system. But in the meantime, I have to go back to DocuSign to DocuSign to come in here. And you can see it already got pulled in. So now I can go ahead, review the document, and it loads DocuSign in a separate tab. Now I need the access code, and that's why I do it simply, because I might forget it otherwise. So one, two, three, four. I validate it. And now I can go ahead and sign the document. You'll notice it's exactly the Peter Engineering Mutual Non-Disclosure Agreement. And now you can see I can add my signature into here. Um, I use just the DocuSign signature. Um, I click the finish button and I'm all done. Now what happens now is because usually the person that signs it might be a new employee or might be is probably going to be somebody external from DocuWare. So you want to make sure that that person receives a copy of their of the, the signed document as well. So if we go back in here, you can see I received a second email with a copy of that signed contract right here, right? And it says your document has been completed. So again, a step that you know you might do right now, like, okay, I sign it, so we cross sign it, so now I gotta send document again. Well, why don't you let DocuWare take care of it? You know, we'll, we'll help you out to save some time and inefficiencies there. Um, in the meantime, you can see that, um, you saw right now that there was some refreshing going on. So you can see that now the status is signed. Um, we can, if we go to page three of this document, you can see that the signature got applied to here. You know, while I showed you how we received the copy, but you'll also notice that we that automatically a document got clipped together. Now, the document that got clipped on top of it is basically a certificate of completion that comes from DocuSign that will make ensure that this basically legal agreement holds up in court, right? Um, and so that we know every everything is all. It's all good. Um, now, we talked earlier that 33% in that study from DocuSign mentioned that they spent 30 plus hours with different versions, right? 
So I'm imagining if you have, if you manage contracts on your own computer, for example, you might have different, you know, maybe like contract one, version one, or then version two, or like final one or final for real now, um, organized on your computer. Well, let me show you how DocuWork can actually have different versions of a document saved. It will use this on this analogy with this mutual NDA contract. If I click here on the version overview, you'll notice there's two versions. One is uh, the 2.0 is the current version that got modified by the APA admin, so me, got modified at 125. Um, and then the other one, 1.0, is out of date. So this is the one, this is the original document that we loaded in that didn't have the signature, right? Again, this is now empty here. Um, and now if you go back to this one, it has the signature in here. If you go to page three. So what we did is we automatically saved as a new version. So we didn't save it as a new document. We just updated the version to it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and now, and similarly, um, like we could have managed basically the on the list in a sense that where we have the the 30 days and 60 days and 90 days expirations, we could build dashboards for new contracts, approved contracts, and signed contracts, right? So right now we are in the signed contract where we again have this contract light up. Now, you know, me being the administrator, that there's somebody else who now completes the, the contract, who now approves it internally. So, but this is not going to be me. This is going to be Brian. So I'm just, Brian Ford's going to say, well, this contract looks good. I'm going to approve it. And now you will notice that even that will go from signed contract to approved contract. And we're now here and the contract is now completed. The workflow is complete, right? Um, so what did I what did we talk about today in this quick introductory demo? I gave you a quick overview of how we can get documents into DocuWork. I kind of gave you an overview of how we can monitor that we never miss a deadline and when it comes to renewals um, through the 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days expiration. I showed you a quick workflow examples of how we can get a contract signed and how we still can use lists as a dashboard to make sure we keep an overview of wherever we're at in the process so we know exactly which documents are signed, which wait approval. Um, I showed you a little bit about how um, the workflow engine works, how, um, how the tasks work, um, obviously, this was just a quick and simple example. We can do way more elaborate tasks, but you know, this is just a webinar. Talk to your local resource if you'd like to have a more in-depth um, uh, in-depth demo uh, on this, or you have any specific questions, you can also ask at the end of it. Okay. Um, Okay, let's really quick review one more time. The before and after is crystal clear. You might have faced these challenges today that you've scattered records in different parts of the organization, maybe paper file cabinets, maybe email unboxes, maybe it's on some kind of drives. Regardless how you organize it, maybe it might be information silos that other departments can't access. Well, this is how I can solve with DocuR. It's going to be one centralized, organized, and safely stored fine cabinet for all your business records. You might also have overwhelming administrative efforts and manual tasks, right? It felt like 44% of the poll earlier said, well, it's very manual, right? Well, how about user ready to use workflows? Maximize your team productivity. Nobody wants to keep an update on an Excel spreadsheet about when contracts are due or renewed. Just use the list. It's so much easier and more intuitive. You employees will love it. I don't know if that's something that you faced recently, but auditing is always painful. Having to admit that there's security failures, you can't control who exactly saw it. Versioning control might not be a thing that you currently really can do, but you have five or 20 different documents saved for the same contract. Well, let us help you. We have audit readiness. We have complete security we can help you with your compliance. Just a quick sneak peek beyond contract. DocuWare is a very versatile solution. Obviously can not only help in the legal department with contract management, we can help you in a plethora of different 
for example, sales, HR, controlling, or anyone that you can really see on the slide. Um, so don't let it stop you. You know, document can be rolled out to multiple departments. Um, users usually love it. And with this, I will pass on pass it on to Nicole to walk us through the last couple of slides. All right, thanks, John, Jonathan. Yeah, so we're, we're we're closing out now, but just wanted to highlight in the case study in the handout section, we have a case study on um, EquiPro, their investments uh, security firm. So, you know, they they handle a lot of different documents, and you know, by switching to DocuWare, they've been able to you know shift their employee resources away from manual you know processing. Um, and with Docker, they will be able to achieve, you know, 50% savings in man hours. So definitely take a look at that case study. I'll include it in the follow-up email tomorrow. And if you, uh, Jonathan, go to the next slide, you know, we do have a lot of user reviews on different sites like Captera, G2 Crowd, Garner Insights. So these are real verified Docker user experiences that you can read about. I'll include a link in the email as well. And of course, you know, you, here's a quick um, overview of all of our uh, security certifications that we have as well. And then if we go to the next slide, you know, we hope you move forward with DocuWare. At least, you know, let's continue the conversation because, you know, we really want you to save, you know, time in the future, you know, take some time now, get everything set up. And that way down the road, you know, you're more productive, um, you know, you can take on more, you know, clients or what have you. And, you know, we hope you don't, you know, stay with option two where you don't do anything and you're still using manual processes and you're, you know, still in the same place next year. You know, we hope, you know, we want you to grow. We want you to move forward with option one. So um, we just want to show the last slide here. You know, we uh, what you saw today was introductory. And, you know, let's continue the conversation. Um, if you want to see a more in-depth uh, demo, you can head to docuer.com slash demo. Email us anytime with any thoughts or comments, questions uh, at contact.us at docuer.com. Um, or if you're working with an authorized Docker partner, definitely reach out to them to get started. So with that, um, Jonathan, let's turn our cameras back on for the Q&A. So I'm going to turn mine on here. All right, great. So yeah, let's start out with um, some questions here. And again, you know, for anyone that, you know, you maybe need to head out, we will send out the recording tomorrow. Just want to remind you on that. So first question is, um, if the same email is sent to multiple people, and then more than one person attempts to save it to DocuWare, will the, will the system recognize that it already exists in the system somehow? Um, I mean, we can set up a quick duplicate check for it. So if we say it's the um, the same, it's a co contract from the same company with the same maybe contract number or the same date of the contract with the same amount of values, we can do a quick check and, and highlight that we found a similar document and, and create a related document to it. So we can avoid doing that. Um, but other than that, um, that would be probably be the easiest way. So to answer your question, there should be a way how we can avoid that. A great question. Yeah, good question. Um, when you store the email, is it stored as a PDF or um, a dot like MSG, like an actual email file, or is it you can do either or? Yeah, so when we, um, the email itself will be stored as a PDF um, within Docuer, so basically convert it. Um, the attachment will stay true to its original format. So if somebody send you a Word doc, um, the attachment will will stay a Word doc. If it's a PDF, obviously, we'll stay a PDF when we store it. Gotcha. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Next question is, um, can you, let's see, did you show how to edit the controls? I saw PDFs and not Word files for editing. So I think they might be asking, like, can you edit, can you use Word files and edit those as well? Um, you mean for the versions? Um, oh, let's see, it was from Michelle. I'm, maybe she wants to further clarify, but I'm probably thinking like, cause you showed maybe mostly PDFs. Can you right. work with and edit Word files as well? Yes, so there, so that's a great question, Michelle. So when you have, when so uh, I store today only PDFs. You can as, just easily uh, store words as Word documents as well. You could then, in your filing cabinet, you could then, 
check out the document, um, edit it, and then save it again back to Docuer, which will then save the new document as a new version. So that you can similar as I showed you with DocuSign, could go back, you can see how the document itself progressed, what changes were made. You can also see who uploaded at what time a different version of it. Um, so that that's how we would do it. Um, yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. Otherwise, please send us a follow-up question in the chat. Yeah, definitely. I um, I I'm able to edit Word files and um, Excel files too, if you needed to, and it's super easy just to edit it. It opens up, you do your thing, you click save, and it just a little notification says, okay, saving back to Docuware. Um, so next question is, can you run reports? Say I want to run a report to see all my contracts expiring within 90 days. Yeah, there is a way. Um... You can run a report. You can you can export either all of these documents out and download them as a zip file. Maybe you could also export the values. So saying like, hey, maybe this is a company A. You know, has this contract. Maybe there's certain contract value assigned with it. You could do that as well. Yes. Um, you know, if you have any further questions on that, I I recommend if you're in my area, reach out to me. Otherwise, reach out to your local reseller or RSD. They'd be more than happy to show exactly how that will work. Okay, great. Next question. Um, can email notifications go out or does it require opening the app to see that notification? That's a good question. Um, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Yeah, so this person is asking, so let's say for the renewals, you have your list, but say you want email, notification, email notifications to go out um, you, maybe a, a week before the date or something like that. Can email notifications be set to go out to your email address or do you need to, you know, a, the app or something to open the notification. Oh yeah, so we can define exactly where, which email address you want to receive that notification, or also who in the organization. Maybe you want to put, um, send it to Jonathan Ernst, um, and but then we'll put my manager on CC so he or she knows, um, can just access those emails as well, see them come through as well. You don't need. It's not only on on your um, on your app on the on your mobile app. Um, it, yeah, so this is a great question, yes. So to answer your question, yes, it can be defined and exactly set up how you would want it to be set up. Gotcha. All right, um, looks like we have five more minutes. I, I know uh, the webinar schedule time set to 2.45. So, you know, whoever, you know, wants to stay on, keep listening to the answers, we'll, we'll go till then. So next question is, where do you do the configuration of, you know, the expiration dates and workflows? Um, uh, that seems to be like more on the back end, right? Yeah. So um, for the for the lists, you can set up those lists um, if you go to um, right uh, into configurations, access the filing cabinet that you would like to create the lists for, and then just define the criteria for those lists. Just create a new list, name the list, and define the criteria. I just use a time frame for it. So seeing like 31 to 60 days, it will pop up in the expires within 60 days list. So that's how you would sort it. Um, for the list, the workflow, we you, you'd have to use the workflow engine, um, which which you then have to basically define at what point the workflow should start. You know, in my case, it was if I store a um, document type with contract and it's defined as status new, we'll kick off the 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 DocuSign workflow. So, but um, so that would be the two differentiators in that. Obviously, it's a little bit easier to set up those lists, um, but we can also send up, you know, as soon as it hits the list, you get a notification by email. So that that can be set up fairly easily as well. Gotcha. All right. Next question is: Is the DocuSign integration a separate subscription, um, or is it available through DocuWare or directly through DocuSign only? So, um, so we we work with two e-signatures providers. Um, one is DocuSign, as I showed. Um, and the other one just uh, slipped my mind. Maybe Nicole, you can help me out. I'm sorry. Validated ID. Validated ID. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry. Um, so um, do with DocuSign, it's a little bit unique. You need to have a separate subscription where you have to go through Docus DocuSign for it. Validated ID you can purchase with DocuWare together. Um, and then, um, you know, if you go with the cloud, uh, the e-signature module for the integration is included. If you wanted to, if you have a current on-premise system or or looking to purchase one, that would be a separate module that has to be included. Otherwise, we cannot connect to DocuSign or Validated ID. Got it. 
All right, let's see. I have a couple more questions here. Um, let me take a look. Can you manage policies and procedures and the revision slash review workflow in DocuWare? Um, yes, it just it just depends a little bit how you want to structure it. What do you what your revisions will be, if it will be more like um, checking out a document, editing it, and uploading it again by hitting the save button and then having it saved as a different version that then now can be accessible to everybody. If you wanted to spice it up even further and say as soon as there's a revision, you'd like to send everybody in the company the updated version as an email with the with the revised document attached. Something like that could be set up easily as well. Um, but just, you know, in general, Nearly everything can be done. It just has to be defined properly, and then we can build it out. All right. Um, he's also asking if we have an example demo or recording of a workflow, which we do. Um, we have um, uh, webinars on that that I can include to you, um, Rich, after this webinar. So thanks for that question. Um, let's see. We have a couple of more minutes. So we'll keep going. Do the documents that are imported into a file cabinet remain on my local system or are they saved in the cloud? Um, they will, so if you pull them in um, through the import button, um, you will still have that same document on your computer. If you, for example, set something up like you monitor a hot folder on the network, and so as soon as any document or file that gets pulled into that folder will automatically get pulled into DocuWare and removed from that folder, and then once it is, the document is stored in that filing cabinet um, in DocuWare, if you chose with the cloud option, it will be saved in the cloud um, or, you know, obviously on-premise will be saved through DocuWare on your local server. Um, but so the answer to your question, yes, that's in DocuWare, that's how it will be. Got it. All right. Next question. Um, I would like to know if what we've seen is a small portion of a back best practice solution with DocuWare, which is available as a package of some sorts, or is it something which to build on the DocuWare platform per customer? And so we do have a sample package for for that, which is um, which is very similar to what I showed you today, that can, this is more plug and play. It has a couple of more, more features to it that I thought was a little bit, might be a little bit overwhelming to see right away. Um, reach out to, to, to you know, DocuWare and, or to your reseller, there is a uh, you know pre-configured solution for that that can be deployed in a matter of days. Great. All right. Looks like we have um, one minute. Let's see. We have. Let's see. If I want three people to sign in the order I have assigned, how do you do that? Um. Um. You can. Um, you can define the workflow so that you define which people you want to send the contract to. Maybe you pull this information off um, in the beginning when you store the document. You can say sign a one, sign a two, sign a three. And then you create a workflow where it then says um, first DocuSign will send it to this person, then will automatically after completion send to person two. You could then get a notification within DocuWare saying, hey, person one sign, it's currently now at person two, create as a list or however you, or you can send out an email notification and then we could just send it, send it through. I just showed a one-step signing process. We can have a multiple-step signing process as well. Um, so th that is definitely possible. All right. We do have one more question since we just have it here. Um, while remote working, I only have a simple Wi-Fi multifunction printer scanner. How can I get DocuWare to recognize this? Um, you could you could try to recognize it through the desktop apps. Um, it's it's a little bit hard to answer that just based on the information. I um, if you have troubles with that, please contact us at DocuWare. Um, if you're my territory, I'd be happy to take a look. If you know all the other RSDs are as qualified as I am, or you know, obviously whoever sold you that printer as a, maybe from our resellers can help you with that as well. They, you know, if it has a scan functionality, there should be ways how we can set up so you can get documents from your device directly into DocuWare. All right, great. Yeah, so that was all of our questions. Thank you everyone who asked and you know was able to stay through the end. Again, you know, look out for the recording no later than tomorrow morning if you um, probably in the next couple of hours if you head back to our homepage, you should be able to see um, the the link to the recording as well 
but you know, we just have to take some time to process that. So again, email us anytime, contact at us.docuware.com, or if you're already um, working with your authorized Docuware partner, definitely reach out to them to get started. They'd be happy to, you know, start, you know, giving you a personalized demo and getting the next steps in order. So, all right, well, thanks again. Thanks, Jonathan, for that awesome demo. That was great. And uh, yeah, so look out for the email and I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.